Good morning. We are delighted to have you join us, whether in the sanctuary or online. If you are, if you are worshiping with us online, please add your name to the comment box or email office at stthomasbc.org. If you're in the sanctuary today, we ask everyone to sign the registration pad located in the pews and pass it to those seated next to you. We will have grace bags available after service, so please take some with you just in case you have the opportunity to give them away. Let's invite Bob Rawson, our moderator of this stewardship and finance committee, up for an announcement about supporting ministry at St. Thomas. Just a real quick update. Just a real quick update since we're at the end of the first quarter. Uh, first quarter has been very good for us. We actually have a slight surplus uh, through the first three months. Uh, we appreciate the generosity of the congregation through uh, donations in cash, check, online, and with, uh, through stock in some cases. One announcement on the stock donations. Uh, if you donate stock or have donated stock, please send a note to uh, either Patty, the treasurer, or me to let me know that you have donated stock because otherwise we don't get an indication of who the stock is from and we can't give you credit for, uh, for your uh, income tax. Thank you. Flowers are offered to the glory of God by Linda Covina and Bob Rosen in celebration of their daughter Alisa's birthday. Happy birthday, Alisa. Please join me in the call to worship found on the screen. The Lord hears us when we call. The Lord fills our hearts with gladness. The Lord grants peace to our weary souls. Come, let us rest at waters of God's grace. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Blessed Savior, You're singing? Yes, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> we were waiting on Dave. <laughs> Open, the Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour 
pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. Join me in the prayer of the day. Blessed Savior, you keep showing up for us in unexpected places. When we face uncertainty, you are there. When we worry about our tomorrows, you are there. Even hours, you are there. Hear our prayer and thanks for your constant love which convinces us to sing out loud, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Amen. And we will sing blessed assurance in just a few minutes. But right now we're invited to consider how our actions mirror our words. It's having a Ramona Downing moment. If our hands were guided by our hearts, if we walked the talk, but too often it is our silence, our doubts, and our fears which tell us who we truly are. So this morning we're invited to confess our sins to God for all the times we have not been as faithful as we hope. Let us do that this morning using the unison prayer that we can find on our screens. Let us join together. God of empty tombs, Peter speaks the power and clarity of his faith while we remain silent. The psalmist speaks of trusting in you while our doubts overwhelm us. Jesus is ready to come and grace us with peace, but our fears keep our hearts shuttered and locked. God of full hearts, your love can change us from scattered people to children of God. You can weave doubts from our hearts and peace. Continue praying silently in your hearts. marvelous love, what wondrous grace that God offers to each and every one of us. In 1 John 3 verse 1, it says, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what each and every one of us are. 
we are children of God, children who are loved and claimed by God. Let us join together in these words of affirmation. So children of God, you are claimed by God, forgiven of our sins, and set free for love. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able in body or spirit and join together in the glory of Patri. forgiven you, we're invited to pass that forgiveness to one another. And as we're in the season of Easter, I've invited you to do a little something different. I know Presbyterians and change. What? We don't do change, right? But we're invited to pass the peace using the words of Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pass those words, friends. So as you find your place, find your hymnal or notice the screens, we will be using uh, 839, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
prayer of illumination. Redeeming God, as we hear your word spoken to us, open our eyes to see the risen Christ. Open our ears to hear the good news of his salvation for all the world. Open our minds to understand the mysteries of your Invite those who are young and young at heart, anyone who's feeling young, to join me up front. Our session has <laughs> our session's probably seen enough of chart paper for the weekend, as we had our session retreat yesterday. That's part of why my voice is so hoarse today. I think I spoke a bit much yesterday. Those are markers, Sam. You got a black one? I do have a black one right here. Have a seat. Okie dokie, but I got this marker. Yes, yes, that's all I needed was that, that statement. So I have a question. I have a question. Can y'all come have a seat? Can you come have a seat? Where? Wherever you want to sit. I'm going to sit right here. Okay, I have a question. Who wrote that on the board right there? You. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. How, how do you know that I wrote that on the board? Because we saw you. You saw yeah. me? So you witnessed me writing that down? So how are we supposed to write that? Well, in our gospel story today, the word witness comes up. What does witness, what does witness mean? It means just to uh, witness something, like a... To, to witness means to witness something. Yeah, hmm. it means to... It means to Yeah, can we observe? Yeah, I was about to say, can we break that down a little further? Because I have not, I, I cannot. My brain's going to fart if I try to keep doing anything. Because I have a brain fart. Can yes, yes. Sometimes adults have that problem too. Can I dwell yes, down? yes. Can I dwell on things too? Maybe later. Maybe later. We're, we're breaking down the word uh, witness. I know it is sad. What, let's, let's break it down into a three letter word, all right? C. You witness something. You, you, see something. you see something. I see you. So, so you saw something, and if you see something, you can talk about it, right? Yeah, see is the is, pre, is, pa, is present, and uh, saw is past. So, what do you think it means when the disciples ah. saw Jesus do something, and Jesus said they were witnesses? Amen. Ah. Some people are like, ah, it's a mummy because, you know, you know, mummies are wrapped in white cloth and, you know. So that's a good example of one story where they were witnesses and they were able to go talk about it. And then Jesus does something else. He sends them out. Because what good is it to be a witness if you have that information and you don't do anything with it, right? Yeah, he's like, okay. He's like, okay, I'll give you the, I'll, I'll send the Holy Spirit so you can do miracles in my place. Teach everyone about the Word of God. So I have a question for you both. How are we called to be witnesses? We observe, um, we observe, we observe this. We observe <coughs> the wonderful glories, like uh, wonderful glories of God. So maybe we're called to love people. We're called to love people. We're called to help people. We're, we're called to treat our neighbors as ourselves. To, to, to what we hear in the Gospels and what we learn in our children's time and to go out and to tell others about that. So today in our text from Luke's Gospel, we're going to hear about Jesus telling them to be a witness and to tell others about that. So let's keep our eyes and our ears open. Yes, exactly. 
but remember to blink. Um, so that when we get today's text, we hear about the word witness. Can you pray with me? Can you clap real good when I say pray? How about you, Sam? Can you clap real good when I say pray? How about congregation? Can you clap real good when I say pray? Oh, that was so good. That's excellent. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you. Help us to trust. Help us to trust in you. And be your witness every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Fist bump. Fist bump. For a second there, I was going to have you. Ready. Maria, can you do a fist bump? Yes, yes, all those young at heart. Oh, that was even better. Yes. Old Testament reading. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You have me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words? and seek after lies. But now that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself, the Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. The word of God for the people of God.
choir. We continue our Luke text this week, picking up in verse 36. Our lectionary wanted us to start in part B of 36, but you know I can be a little bit of a curmudgeon when it comes to starting in the middle of verses. Um, And if we did that, we would miss the connection, which starts with while they were talking about these things. And that these things that they were talking about is uh, where we were last week with the uh, Emmaus conversation. So we pick back up with that. I invite you all to follow along uh, on the screen or in your favorite translation. If you have your phone and you want to turn to that, feel free. Again, Luke 24, 36 to 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself, Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. So he said to them, have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to the understanding of scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and and to be raised from the dead on the third day. And that the repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, and beginning from Jerusalem. You, you are witnesses of these things. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As some of you know, My first job, as I was a 15-year-old, was working with boys and girls clubs in South Alabama. And I worked with them through college and eventually became a director of a boys and girls club site. One of the highlights of that summer program is that a select number of students got to go to a camp that the boys and girls club owned. It was in the middle of the city, and yet it was in the middle of the woods. So it was a way for them to get away. And for four days, we would take the kids during the day and had a pool, a lake, large athletic fields. But on the fourth night, the kids could spend the night. And I drove the van one particular year back and forth. The the site that I directed was about 45 minutes from the campsite. And every day I enjoyed listening to their conversations as I was driving the van. One particular year, it was quite comical because they came up with a mythical ghost creature called Wheezy. And Wheezy lived in the woods. And each day, the conversations about Wheezy got more and more crazy. So on the night of the camp out, One lucky staff person got to spend the night with the boys, and another staff person stayed the night with the girls, with the on-site camp staff. And of course, I was with the boys as we step, as we stayed in these surplus army tents that were probably from, I don't know, the Korean War or something, or Vietnam. They were really, really old, with spiders and all the other stuff you can imagine, because they stayed out year long. But one of the staff members got the goofy idea of going in the woods and making wheezy noises and getting a flashlight and sort of making shadows on the pine trees. 
And the rest of us didn't really mind because the whole night long, those boys were so scared to get out of that tent that they didn't move. So we learned an important lesson, and the mythology of Wheezy probably still continues to this day. Well, in today's scripture, the disciples have their own ghost story experience. Now, not of Wheezy, of course, but it's still Easter evening. And our scripture begins, as I said, with while they were talking. And to find out who they were, we only look back a few verses. And it's the 11 disciples who gathered in a room in Jerusalem where the two individuals that we talked about last week returned from the Emmaus Road. And they were discussing all that happened from their encounter on that road and on their counter when they had a meal with Jesus and in the middle of that meal Jesus disappeared and I talked to you all about the holy heartburn moment if you recall that as they talked about how weren't our hearts burning as we knew that it was Jesus who was nearby so as they're discussing all that happened in that encounter with those who had not yet experienced Jesus we find them startled and terrified and afraid as if they saw a ghost. And this story reads like a close encounter with the third kind because Jesus appears out of nowhere and stands among them. And Jesus says, peace be with you all. What I like about this is in the midst of their terrified moment, Jesus gives them a gift of peace. Jesus focuses first on calming their hearts and asking them, why are you so afraid? Well, obviously, we understand why they're so afraid. Because people who are dead are supposed to stay dead. And Jesus just appeared out of thin air in front of them. And it's one thing to hear a ghost story, but it's another for the ghost story like appearance to appear. It's one thing to hear noises of a wheezy character in the woods. It's another for wheezy to appear in the tent, right? But in Luke's gospel, this is the fifth appearance of Jesus out of six appearances. You'd think by now they would have gotten it. Eh, Jesus has to do it six times for them to get it. It was scary for those experiencing it for the first time. So he wanted to dispel the ghost stories. And he starts with, peace be with you all. A second gift he gives them is an invitation to experience a tangible sensation of his presence. He invited them to not only see his hands and feet, but to touch him. I tell you, if you're having a rough day, if you feel like your world's falling apart, there's nothing like a friend coming over and offering you a hug. Come here, let me give you a hug. If your kid comes home from school crying, there's nothing like a parent or a grandparent or an aunt, an uncle, or, or even a teacher in the school, if they're allowed to do that these days, to give kids a hug, right? I love the videos of the kids entering school and they have a choice. Do you want a hug, a handshake, a fist bump? It's the kid's choice. But there's something about that personal connection, that tangible touch that reminds us that we are not alone. He wasn't a ghost. And he asked them, does a ghost have flesh and bones that you can see? Jesus wasn't Casper the Friendly Ghost. Jesus wasn't something that you could just wave your hands through. Though he was the same, Jesus was also a little different. And we have to acknowledge that because Jesus could just appear into a space. In the last section of this chapter, he also promises them to send his spirit to always be with them. So in the midst of their terrified state, he also promises them, I'm not going to leave you alone. But the disciples were still in their disbelief. And 
in the um, paraphrase, the message, it translates as follows. They still couldn't believe what they were seeing. It was too much. It was too good to be true. Some of us have times where things are just too much. It's too much on us. And it doesn't matter what we're promised. It's just too much. And in their joy, they were still questioning. And what I love about this text is Jesus understood their fears. And He focused on the gift of reassurance that He indeed was alive, that He was risen, or what we understood today is He wasn't a hologram. To further calm their concern, Jesus sounds a little bit like a teenager who gets home from school in the afternoon as He said, y'all got something to eat? What you got to eat? Because Jesus knew that a ghost wouldn't need food. But someone alive would need sustenance. So what do they do? They grill up some fish. Maybe Jesus liked barbecue. Maybe Jesus get along with some of us here in Texas and South Louisiana, some grilled fish. I wonder if Jesus liked it blackened. So they took that fish. But the thing that kind of annoys me, or is a little weird for me, is they watched him eat it. I don't like people watching me eat. I'm a little nervous when somebody just watches me type on the computer because, you know, I'm going to hit that wrong key the second somebody's staring at me. So when I'm working with Kathy, I'm always cognizant going, okay, I'm behind you, but I'm going to step up a little bit because, you know, I don't want you to feel like I'm staring at you. And, of course, she always laughs and says, that doesn't bother me. But, it, you know, it, it does me a little bit. But they were staring at him while he was eating. But he wanted them to know that, you know, we know that children's cartoon Casper where the food just kind of drops right out of him. That didn't happen with Jesus. Something else that I was reminded of this week is the early symbol of Christianity was not a cross. It was a fish. There's something life-giving about breaking bread and table fellowship that builds up the community. Like the concept of that stone soup where people bring a little of this and a little of that and they mix it together. Jesus, in the midst of their terrified state, decided, y'all, we need a little bit of a potluck. Who's got some fish? Let's grill it up. Let's sit down. Y'all watch me eat. Okay, that last part, like I said, is still strange. But he reminded them of how important it was to break bread in the midst of their fear. To those long ago who had trouble recognizing the resurrection and to us, Jesus leaves them with one more gift. Jesus provides the gift of opening their minds to understanding. And he said, this is what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations. And he invites the disciples into the resurrection story. As they're no longer just disciples, they're now what? Okay, it's over there. They're witnesses. Yes, they're witnesses to the life-changing good news. And Jesus does the same for us. He invites us to see the world through resurrection eyes, recognizing new life emerges from the ashes of despair. Because when we encounter the risen Jesus, we too receive his peace and his presence, renewing and sustaining us to hope. Because we are called not only to witness, but to share this life with others. Therefore, today, let us embrace these gifts, this gift of peace, this gift of presence, this gift of understanding and hope, as we too go forward to be witnesses, proclaiming the resurrection in our midst, in this season of Easter, sharing the transformative power of Christ's love with all. Friends, may we embrace these gifts of Jesus and boldly be witnesses of hope to a world today that is in great need. Friends, may it be so. Amen. As we struggle with what it is that we believe, as we're called to be witnesses, I invite you to affirm your faith using words of Scripture today from Romans chapter 8. 
Please stand as you're able in body and spirit. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For, for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose, we are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to our time of prayer today, what are the things that are on your mind that you'd like us to lift up in prayer? Israel, Gaza, and Iran. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Lynn. Lynn is lifting up a friend who uh, needs prayers to remember to take their medicine every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Maria. For Linda Doolittle, who is ill, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Beth. For Beth's cousin who has brain cancer, tumor is, what did you say? She's having surgery on Tuesday. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I also celebrate that Beth is with us today. She's a very dear friend from Hammond, Louisiana. And her daughter, Alyssa, is also here. So celebrations for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Justin. Prayers for Noel's good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Dick and Petey Meyer, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, merely. For finances and taxes. Yes, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Missy's friend, Karen. Karen Ann, thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We're thankful to see Mary today for her continued healing and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Celebration for a good session retreat yesterday and all those who helped make it successful. There you are. <laughs> I'm giving nods, but not calling names. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any others that I've missed? Let us pray. God of abundant grace, we gather today just as your first disciples gathered in the wake of the resurrection, in joy and wonder and disbelief. We remember that whatever or whenever we gather in your name, you appear in the midst, offering us the comfort of your presence, the assurance of your love. We give you thanks, like the first disciples, that you give us community to practice our faith. Grant us grace to hold space for one another's doubts and questions. Give us courage to admit that we don't have all the answers. Make this community where we can explore what it means to receive forgiveness and dedicate our lives to you. We remember that when the risen Christ first appeared to his disciples, he offered them peace. Our world is in deep need of your peace, O oh God. A peace that is not only an absence of conflict, but the peace of wholeness for all people. 
We pray for innocent victims of war in Ukraine and Israel and Gaza, Myanmar, Iraq, Haiti, Russia, South Sudan, and all places around the world. Will you put an end to violence, O Lord? Teach us to recognize our shared humanity, our shared status as your beloved people, each of us created in your image. In this month of April, we acknowledge all those with autism and neurodiversity who struggle daily to understand how the social world operates. We pray for all who provide them with care and community. And we pray that the community will one day replace stairs with understanding, compassion, and love. Lead each of us to prioritize peace, both in our homes, in our communities, and in our wider world. We pray for all who sit in seats of power. Will you fill their hearts with compassion and their decisions with wisdom so that they may have the chance not only to survive, but to flourish? Most of all, God, save us from despair. Open our eyes to see the signs of resurrection life that all around us. Plant hope within us. Help us to nurture its tender shoots that it may grow more robust each day. May we begin to imagine the future of your shalom as we remember this week our Muslim neighbors who celebrated Eid. Loving God, we pray for members of our community who need your care, especially those affected by storms and extreme weather, tornadoes and flooding across the Gulf Coast. Ease the suffering of those who are sick and speed the healing of those in recovery. Comfort all those who mourn and bring rest to those who are worn down. Surround the isolated with love and soothe the troubled minds of the anxious. Remind us of our call to love one another as you loved us with love that casts out fear and creates community. Grant us energy to serve one another with humility and hope and keep us in your service until Christ comes again and makes all things new. So help us today as we ponder all these things and give all these things to you and say the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. By the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives have borne much fruit. Let us now return thanks where it is due and offer the fruits of our labor back to the Lord. Let us receive the morning offering.
it is our joy to return the gifts of our lives to you. May our offering this morning forever bring glory to your name, and may we continue to work tirelessly for the well-being of your whole creation. Amen. Together, we are the body of Christ in our world. And wherever we go, however we live into that call of the risen Christ, will call us, God's love will surround us. Sometimes popping in at unexpected times and unexpected ways, but the Spirit always breathes new life into our weary souls. Friends, may we embrace this exciting call that we go on in this Easter season. May the love of God be with each and every one of you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.